all right, I have been running into way too much Charizard, way too much Roaring Moon, way too much Maridon, way too much Quad Thorns, way too much Ancient Box. There's got to be some deck we can play that just beats all these decks. All right, I'm just going to filter by Grass type because, I mean, we probably want to build a Grass deck if we're going to beat these Dark decks. Um, let's see what we got here. Yo, it's Pathray EX. Wait, this might be perfect. This path has always been really good into these big basic decks, like Ancient Box and Moon. Also into Zard, and it seems pretty good into, like, these other big basics, like Maridon and Quad Thorns. I think we might have just found the perfect answer. So welcome back everybody to a brand new Pokemon Tisha Live video, and today we're looking at Espathra EX, which truly, there might not have been a better time to play Espathra EX than right now. There are so many big basic turbo decks in the format. On top of that, two of the biggest big basic decks in the format happen to be Roaring Moon decks with Ancient Box and Turbo Moon, both getting a lot of play right now in the format. On top of the fact that Charizard is still in the format, which is another matchup as Pathra usually is good against. So it's just, like I said, never been a worse time to play the deck than right now with all these big basic decks like Turbo Moon, Ancient Box with Charizard, even Maridon being a fairly decent matchup for Espathra. It is the best time to play Espathra. And the main reason why it's so good is because its ability, Dazzling Gaze, which as long as it's in the active spot, attacks used by your opponent's active Pokemon require one colorless energy more, making it really awkward to attack it. All of a sudden, stuff like Maridon needs four energy, um, Charizard needs three energy, Roaring Moon needs four energy, even Reggie Drago needs four energy, which can sometimes be awkward. And like even Teal Mask Ogre Pond needs a lot of energy. So you can kind of see why his Pathra's ability is so strong. Its attack also is really good with its ability, Cyball doing 30 damage plus 30 more damage for each energy on both active Pokemon. Of course, if your opponent has to overcommit energy to attack you, you can just hit them really hard in return with Cyball. We can of course power up our Pathra with Zatu's Clairvoyant Sensibility. Once you're in turn, you can put a basic Psych Energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon, and then draw yourself two cards. Mini Jonjin plus Energy Acceleration, pretty good stuff. Psychic Energy, of course, is how you build up your Spathroid. Now, there is one matchup in the format that I have found a way to fix, and that's our Raging Bolt matchup. Yes, Espathra is insanely good in these big basic turbo decks. The one turbo deck, though, that is very difficult to beat is Raging Bolt. I think Raging Bolt beats Espathra because they can easily one-shot you, and honestly, it's not that hard for them to get, you know, three energy on a Raging Bolt. It's really not that complicated. So the best way to counter Raging Bolt is to play uh, for Rigorap with its ability Armor Tail. Attacks used by uh, your opponent's basic Pokemon EX do nothing to Frigraph. So essentially, Frigraph is immune to most of Raging Bolt's entire deck. The only Pokemon theoretically that can attack you is the Fluttermane and the uh, Sandy Shocks if they play those. However, you can just knock them out Dirty Beam anyways, and the game just ends. You can also, of course, use League Headquarters to make it harder for them to attack. And, of course, we have the Hero's Cape and Rigid Band tool cards, making Frigraph a very bulky tank against Raging Bolt. This is our answer to Raging Bolt. Play the Frigraph, put into play, and then, you know, Raging Bolt just kind of crumbles. Because otherwise, you can't really beat it without it. But otherwise, I mean, this Pathra can kind of check, I think, most decks in the format, especially the two big Roaring Moon decks that are seeing a lot of play right now. Before you get the video, shout out to the sponsor Card Cavern TCG. Of course, if you're going to get any Pokemon t Fly pack outs, get them over at Card Cavern. Card Council is coachline for the cheapest. So if you're looking for any set like the main set, Shroud of Fable, or of course, when Stellar Crown does release in a couple of weeks, get your Stellar Crown coats over at Card Cavern, or you want to get some IRL TC singles and product. Card Cavern does sell all that over there. If you get anything at Card Cavern at the checkout, Use my discount code CODELDF for a 5% discount on your order. Help the channel, help yourself out, and up our card cabin. So big shout out to Card Cabin. Check them out. Use code LDF, link down below. Also, check out my second channel down below, too, if you want to get some extra content from me. I did post some very unique videos this weekend, um, so definitely check out those videos down below. I did one where I looked at what are the best Kanto Pokemon cards. So what Pokemon from the Kanto region have had the best Pokemon card design. So definitely check out that video down below. It would be greatly appreciated. But here is the list for playing within today's video. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. We just got the Zatus in the deck, the Ispathra. I was originally playing Bayonet 2. A lot of the original Ispathra builds from the Temporal Forces format played Bayonet in it. Bayonet was a little bit better into, like, the meta, because it was better into, like, Lost Box. It was better into Shen Pao. It was also better into, like, Snorlax and Control. But those decks have all kind of fizzled out a little bit. Like, I think Snorlax has seen a bit of a drop-off in popularity thanks to Petron and Moon. And I don't think they're that popular anymore. And with Shempao also, like, not really being in a deck right now, it's, like, pretty good for Spathra. Because, like I said, you just farm these big turbo decks. I mean, Roaring Moon is really good. Ancient Box is getting a ton of hype. Ancient Box is really good because it beats up on all the turbo decks. You have Charizard, which is, you know, normally a decent matchup. I'll say Charizard maybe got a little bit harder because of Dusknor and Dusclops, but I still think the matchup is fine. Also, a lot of the Zard lists have been going down to five fire energy, which is also a big deal for Spathra. 
Another thing I wanted to mention in the deck is Heroescape. The Ace spec of choice was a little bit difficult to narrow down. Honestly, I wanted to play Hyper Roma. I wanted to play Heroescape. I wanted to play even Unfair Stamp. I think those are the three best Ace specs. Hyper Roma, obviously, we're playing an all-stage one deck. Really good card to have. Heroescape is nice because it just makes your Pathra really hard to KO. And sometimes Heroescape can make a big difference in a matchup. Also, it, you know, really good on your Frigraph if you're playing against Raging Bolt. It just makes it really difficult for Raging Bolt to ever deal with you. On top of the fact that you can just slap it onto a Pokemon if you're scared of Dragapult or something. Unfair Stamp can be good. Just It's an extra draw card and it's Disruption. Unfair Stamp with this Pastor's ability can be very annoying to deal with. On top of the fact that, uh, you know, an extra bit of draw doesn't hurt anyone. But I ended up going with Heroescape. Honestly, I just think it's the best A spec. I think all three of them are honestly pretty good. The reason I scrapped the Hyper Roma, we don't play a way to find items. Like, we just have to draw into it. Like, draw into it before you set up. I don't know. Hyper Roma is really only good to set you up. And once that is done, the Hyper Roma is useless. I think Hero's Cape is just a better value A spec card. Unfair Stamp would probably be the second best A spec. I mean, the only really card I want to add in this deck is another Energy or an Energy Retrieval. Other than that, I like the list a lot. And I think its path is really good right now. So let's go show it off and see what it's all about. All right, get into this game. I see a Roaring Moon. Ooh, this could be Moon. All right, our starting hand is. Pretty solid. Okay, well, now it's even better. Jeez. All right, we just want Flittle Natu. My opponent may KO me here. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach, retreat into the other Flittle. Pass? Not sure that really matters because technically it doesn't. I don't know. I also don't know what I'm playing against. I mean, I'm on the Fruit Tree Pivot, but it's most likely Moon, which is literally, like, you know, one of our best matchups. I, I would say Ancient Box is better than Turbo Moon just because Turbo Moon does still have, like, Frenzy Gouging, which is kind of annoying. So it's, like, still not... A like, the perfect auto win. But it is still one of our better matchups. This is why it is good to play as Pathor right now. We'll see what they got, though. They do have the Squawk start. Pretty good start for my opponent. They got the Moon. They got the Poke Stop. Pretty good stuff. Ooh, the Catcher. Let's we'll see what they go after. Tails. I mean, if you flip heads, I think you take the Flittle down, I guess. Sure. We're chilling, though. We have a decent hand. Now, my opponent could leave the Squawk ability in the active at the end of the turn instead of just going Moon Knockout, right? Because then, like, you know, we just go Espathra. And Espathra actually can't kill Squawkability, technically. Ooh, Judge. Uh-oh. I mean, if my opponent could go double Dark Patch. Ooh, dang. There it is. If they go double Dark Patch Judge and I Brick, it's kind of bad, actually. Can they do it? Let's see. they got to find that second Dark Patch, though. I mean, they could Judge into it, obviously, which is also kind of scary. But my opponent could also just leave the Squawkability in the active, obviously, right? It's like I don't have an immediate way to kill it. No, another patch. No baby moon either. All right, let's see. Are they going for the judge? There it is. All right, judge. We got nine supporters plus technically Zatu for energy acceleration. Judge is a big fat lie. We got an Iona owner research and a boss. We got three different supporters to choose from. And yeah, see, they just pass. So, ooh, league headquarters. Hmm, okay. Unfortunately, I did not draw the Aspathra, so I can't kill the moon this turn. I could Poke Stop maybe into Ultra Ball. I don't really want to play Poke Stop, though. I don't want to lose a Vi eh, Do I really want to risk it? It's tempting. It's very tempting. Okay. YOLO? Okay, please don't punish me. It's honestly worth it if we get it. Oh, my God. What? We drew... Okay, wow. That's ridiculous. Jeez. That's insanity. Wow. Alrighty then, that works for me. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Cannot believe that Pokestop actually just gave us the best possible cards we could have got. Wow. Loki kind of feel bad. That was a giant sack. But we are going to kill the moon. Uh, trying to think what I want. Another Nat 2 wouldn't hurt. Actually, could get Farigaraf. If they go uh, Frenzy Gouge here, we have the Giraffe Rig to kill them. Probably should just get Natu, though. I was tempted to get the draft. Uh, play that, sure. Knockout. That was quite a sack, not gonna lie. I kind of feel bad for my opponent that we actually hit all that. I mean, Judge actually just, like, scammed my opponent so hard. But this is a huge lead. Technically, now we just win the prize trade, right? Oh, we even get another boss for next turn. Holy moly. That's pretty good, too. My opponent could still knock me out. They do need four... Five energy plus, like, or at least a stadium bump. They need a lot to knock me out here. And if they do KO me... We have another research. This is why I kind of wanted to get the giraffe rig there. Because if they do knock me out, we at least could have knocked them out with a one prizer. So it's like, I mean, we could theoretically get punished. And they got a lot of stuff. 
Can they find the Pokestop at the very least? They need a Pokestop plus another energy acceleration. Okay, now they need a Pokestop or another Dark Patch. If they don't, we just, unfortunately for my opponent, just scam them and have another boss in our hand. Like, I actually kind of feel bad. That is, like, an absolute giant sack. We'll see. They have that. They've already done Greninja and Squawk, it looks like. Or Fez, sorry. A lot of birds in play. No, they haven't Greninja. Okay. Oh, the red arrow's from the League Headquarters. Like, I was like, all right, whatever. Ooh, they could flip heads on Catcher, too. They do. Okay, bye-bye Flittle, I guess. That's fine. But, I mean, the problem is, even if my opponent does this, I just kill the moon anyways with the Espathra that doesn't die. It's, like, just not a great spot for my opponent being. But this is kind of why the Espathra deck is pretty good right now. Just, we're playing against one of our better matchups, and unfortunately, this is just kind of how the matchup goes for my opponent. So, we just need to focus on getting one more Espathra in play, and that should be it. We are, unfortunately, going to lose our second boss. It's all good, though. Let's see what our top deck is. I mean... Sure. Put that there and research. Okay. Night Stretcher's clutch. We didn't get a Buddy Poffin, so the Night Stretcher does come in clutch here. We didn't get it as that, too, which is a little annoying. We do know my opponent most likely doesn't have a way to knock out Espathra, though, with um, anything but Moon. So it's like we could still just win. We didn't get a Zat, too, and they scoop it up. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel bad for my opponent. We kind of, one, we Giga Sacked. Two, they're playing against potentially their worst matchup, but. Like I said, this is why Espathra is the perfect anti-meta deck right now. And, I mean, you can see how the moon matchup just goes. And, unfortunately, it's, just, it's not a great matchup for my opponent. Even though, you know, we actually kind of couldn't stabilize well there at the end. But it worked out. It was just, it's a bad spot for my opponent to be in. We hit a Maridon Reggie Lecky deck. I am not sure how I feel about this. We do have Farigaraf, but they have Reggie Lecky. Huh. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this, to be honest with you. I mean, I guess I'll bench the Rafferig. There's no reason not to. And probably just want to retreat into the other flittle attach here and pass. I might end up building up Ger uh, the Farigraph. I don't know how good it is. One thing that's really annoying about this matchup is that Espathra does let Maridon want to KO my uh, Espathra. So this is like honestly the worst case scenario of playing against a Maridon deck, which is kind of a problem for us. This is uh, kind of scary, not going to lie. I don't know, maybe I should have put energy on the Flittle. I don't know, maybe I should have just, I don't know. It's kind of tough either way. Like, it's just, I don't know. We'll see if they can attack me this turn. They got the generator and Forest Seal. Ooh, the generator fails, though. There's actually a silver lining. The issue with playing Veggie Lecky, though, it clogs up your deck. But it's a little scary. Um, I wonder how good this actually is. Because it does let Maridon one KO Reggie Drago. Actually, I don't hate that. Maybe we should revisit Reggie Lecky with Maridon. It's actually not a terrible idea. They, they got two energies, it looks like. They definitely got two energy on this generator. That's a big yikes. But where are they going to move it? Are they going to go Raikou, Iron Hands, Maridon? Iron Hands it is. We can blow up the Iron Hands in one hit with the Espathra. I'm okay if they go for the if they go for the Iron Hands. Do they have DT? They don't have DT. Oh, okay. Do they have a supporter or anything? I probably have the Wyono, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, they Arvind already. I'm trolling. I forgot they already Arvind. Okay. Surprised they didn't... I mean, I guess that's okay. I don't know. Honestly, I wonder... Okay, you know what? Maybe I should have just went for Rigraph here, actually. I might be trolling. Hmm. Yeah, I might be trolling. I should have maybe just... Because I could have built up Rigraph this turn. Probably should have just went for the Rigraph angle. It's fine. Poffin's good. Another Flittle and Natu. Yeah, I should have maybe went for Rigoraf. It would have been a good opportunity to go for Rigoraf, right? Hmm. Yeah, a bit of a misplay on my end. It's okay, though. We'll just go with Spathra. Do I want to do anything else? I don't know. They... <laughs> this could be pretty bad. They could have boss energy, which is not good. I can't knock them out, obviously. Could just Iono them here. I don't want to give them more cards, though. Not right now, anyways. I'm just going to smack for 150. Yeah, I should have just attacked with Farigraf this turn. I kind of just, like, tunnel vision on Espathra until it's too late. Because I could have promoted Flittle, retreated, and then just powered up Dirty Beam. And honestly, Dirty Beam's not bad. That 30 damage is, like, not terrible um, extra damage output. Ah, really regretting that. They attached a Raikou, though, which is a good sign. 
Let's see if they can amp this turn. I don't think they can, judging from the attachment to the Raikou. Leak Headquarters is going to go hard, too. Actually, really good. They played Beach Court now. Yeah, I don't want Iono. They could just be bricking, so it's not reason Iono. They do have a uh, Switch card, though. Okay, maybe they are trying to go for that Generator Amp play. Got the Free Graph. So even if they go, like, Bundle here, we can just promote this guy and force my opponent to not be able to touch it. Unless they, like, somehow build up Raikou or Regilecki. We, I don't know if that's possible right now, but, you know, just in case. We need to find Boss. Maybe I should have Iono, but, like, they aren't doing much. I don't really see a reason to play Iono. Yeah, if they're not doing anything, I definitely do not want to give them Iono. They do have the Hyper Blower. That was their hand? Oh, sure. Okay, wow. That's disgusting. Maybe I should have Ionoed. Are they going to play the Iron Bundle? The Iron Bundle, I'll just give them Frigraph. So, it's like not that big of a deal. Once again, should have had two energy on it at the very least. I could have been swinging with the Giraffe here. But now it's like no longer as good to go Frigraph. Yeah, they Bundle, we just go Frigraph. We'll have the Harder Tree did. We can always rod the three energy back, though. Let's see what they do. Are they going to go bundle, or are they going to just pass? And then I can knock out the iron hands. Either way, it's pretty good. Either way, it's pretty good. They have a Reggie Lecky, too. They haven't played a Reggie Lecky yet. No, there's Hyper Blower. I could try to get Rescue Board on for a grab. That'd be a bit more ideal, instead of just wasting two more of our energies be a little bit more ideal i really want to find league headquarters i really want to get league headquarters here so we can block them from attacking a bit more because i doubt they play more than two stadiums so like we technically win the stadium race so i want to find uh hero's cape if i can too or rigid man one of those two would be good rigid man does make it some ride on with two reggies can't one shot and his path which is also very important i don't know if they're playing three reggies but we'll see they haven't gotten one into play yet, so who knows? Who knows? Do they have anything else? They're taking a while to make their move. Okay, they're finally doing something. They're tan immunity. But what do you even grab with this? Zero Aura? Sure. Hmm. Yeah, I really wish I attacked with this guy earlier. We could have got 30 on Raikou, set it up to be killed a bit easier by his path row. 30 on Maridon. 30 on Reggie would have been good, too. Furgraph should have been the attacker, not the path row. Bit of a misplay on my end. All right, let's see what we top deck here. All right. Do I want to Iono them to five? Okay. They didn't do any. They didn't generate her. They didn't evolve. I feel like research is just fine. Plus, like, it gives me more to finding what I want to find, which honestly is, like, a lot of good stuff was found there. Okay, let's get rid of Poffin. Do a little bit of thinning. Gotta find Rod or Night Stretcher, so. Okay. Go Zatu. Okay. Spread the energy out. Nice, we got Rod. Perfect. Now I don't feel as bad about retreating. Alright, cool. We can Rod three energy back. And then Ultra Ball. Hmm. Low key, the baby for Rigoraf sounds kind of decent in this matchup. Maybe it's better over Nest Ball, but I also get another Flittle here. Nah, whatever. We have Night Stretcher. Worst comes to worst. It's fine. I want to get another S Pathway down, so it's kind of important. Nest Ball. Just grab like a Flittle or something. Actually, well, we can get another Natu. Might be better to get Natu because they could also go after Zatu at some point. The big part about this is we got the League Headquarters, which is ginormous. Yeah, let's knock him out. The research was nice, because, like, I, I didn't even know if I wanted to Iono. I mean, they do have a giant hand, but, like, they didn't do much with their giant hand. They didn't even put a Reggie Lucky in a place. I don't even know. I think it's okay to just chill for a bit. League Headquarters plus this path is kind of dirty. We'll see if they have a stadium here. They might be playing maybe a vacuum, so maybe they have, like, three bumps to this League Headquarters, I guess. We'll see. They have Arvin. They also are down two generators. They have to rely on generator to keep up the momentum. So we'll see if they can even get to that point. Here we go. Generator. What do they find? How many energy? Did they find another double energy generator? Bro, not like this. They did. Oh, God. The skill diff is real. That's a little scary. Always retreat into this guy, which you might have to do. They still 
don't have the attack. They have to attach to Raikou to attack me here, which is pretty funny. Unless I have a stadium. We'll see. Let's see, let's see. They, they literally can't attack. They need a stadium bump. I don't know if they realize that or not. Before they fleet foot into stadium and just be like, yo, I'm the world's greatest Maridon player, bro. No shot. They literally can't attack. I don't know if my opponent realizes the league headquarters. <laughs> no, my God. Did they actually draw that off the fleet footed? Oh, uh, they might have. I don't know. That's kind of, that's sus. <laughs> Whatever. Do they have a Reggie Lecky though? It's the question. They haven't played a Reggie Lecky yet, like I said. So they may not even have Reggie Lecky still. They're not knocking me out. Nope, no Reggie Lecky. Hmm. I definitely am not knocking this thing out, right? It's like no shot. Ooh. 180. Eh, actually, it's, mm, on the bench as bathroom, maybe. Okay. It's Vessel. Start getting more energy on the board. Okay, Poffin's not really that good. Clairvoyant Sense. Morty. Okay. 180, 210, 240. Ooh, I think we're one off. I think we're one energy off, right? I'm still going to retreat just in case. Yeah, we're one off. Ben of that, we could have got there. All right, Morty's Conviction. Yeah. Unfortunate. Okay, it's fine. Swing for 210. Now I wish I did have another as bathroom play now nah, this is fine we can still probably win this at this point honestly all we have to do is knock out one more two prize and we win the game which is not that hard so i think we're chilling i think we're chilling it's a little annoying that they found the bravery charm and it actually survived the turn and they had the stadium bump of course we'll see what we can do next turn their deck doesn't have a draw engine so like iono plus like leak headquarters could go pretty hard if we ever get to that point too they still haven't gotten a reggie lecky out which is also pretty good Heavy Baton. Okay. Counter Catcher. What? Counter Catcher and Maridon? Okay. What the heck, bro? No shot they play that. Well, the good news is we're not going to get amped here. They're going to kill the Aspathra with the Raikou, but okay. Was not expecting to see that. Oh, they can knock him out Zero Aura. Wait, no, they can't. They still need two energy to attack with Zero Aura. They still can't even Zero Aura me, which is pretty funny. That would be pretty bad. They could Zero Aura. I still need to find my Hero's Cape, like I said. It's pretty annoying. Counter Catcher and Maridon. I've seen it all. All right, whatever. It is what it is. Let's see. Do they have anything? They have an Ultra Ball. They can finally get their Reggie Lecky into play, it looks like. Mm, we'll see if it matters. It probably does matter, to be honest. Hmm. It's a crazy Maridon list. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm what to expect, which is kind of the problem I'm facing here. They're retreating. They can't attack. I don't know. Did they not realize they can't attack me here? They literally can't attack unless they have energy switch. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised at this point they had one. Yeah, they can't attack. I don't know. Uh, we don't have to waste a boss, though, to kill the Raikou, which is kind of annoying, but I'm okay with that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if they realize. Yeah, they. I don't know if they realize they can't attack. What do we draw? Ooh, there's the Iono. Okay, so I'm down to just boss kill Raikou and then go from there. Do I want to retreat those? The question. I, mean, I probably should, right? It's obviously going to kill Zero Aura next turn. Yeah, I'm down to retreat. Is that too? I need to be a little cautious with my energy. I want to overcommit energy. Nice. Let's go, League Headquarters. Do I slam that down now or do I wait? They've played two stadiums. So. I might wait to play League Headquarters. I think I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to wait to play that, to be honest. I'm down. I'm going to put that on top of the deck, too. I'm down to just wait to play League Headquarters. Still have a bit of ways to go to win this game. Because we still have to take out another two-prizer, and there's not really a good option on the board at the moment. But let's see if we can get off the prizes. Satu Research. Okay. I want to get another Aspathra and play, too. That's the only reason I wanted them to kill this, but better to deny him the prize anyways, I feel like, at this point. So I should be fine. Stunify my Hero Escape, which I think is in there. Rigid Bambi good too, obviously. 
I mean, if they have boss, I mean, they probably have boss. They haven't played a boss yet. I wouldn't be surprised if they had boss energy on this guy. They probably still have the K on the Espathra, so we'll see. If they knock me out, we can go Iona League Headquarters, knock out Zero Aura, and call it a day. There's Super Rod. Ooh, they got the Rod, too. They're putting Iron Hands and Raikou back. Okay. I don't know if they can really ever Iron Hands me again. It's very unlikely at this point. Ooh. Okay, I'm so glad I didn't just play down the League Headquarters. They got rid of Double Boss. Insane. And the Academy at Night. Even more insane for us. Okay, wow. That's pretty good. Now they literally have no stadium left. Now I can just go Lee Headquarters Iono, and we're chilling. Now they do have one play to that. They can technically use Reggie Lecky, but Reggie Lecky VMAX needs four energy still with the Espathra. So that's still really tricky for them. That is really, really good. All right, nice. I was actually kind of lucked out there because they, they didn't have the energy either. Um, so they had to research. That's really good. They actually would have had the boss KO, of course. All right, it's all gravy, baby. We got this. We got this. Maybe you could have Academy at Night and Energy on top of the deck. I probably should have. We're just going to play the Iono. And we got a Night Stretcher anyways. Lit. I just want to draw more cards. I don't know where I want to put the Energy yet, but we'll figure it out. Put that there, sure. Okay. Knock out. I, don't know, I guess I didn't need to Iono because I shook my hand, but it's fine. I also want to get closer to finding Boss's Order. And I want to get rid of their hand they had. All right, what's our one prize? Yes, ball. All right, it's decent. They could technically KO me this turn. They need a lot to KO me, so I don't know if they can do that, to be honest with you. They play four stadiums? Are you serious? No! What? Okay, that's really annoying. They had four stadiums in the deck. Come on, bro. What do you mean you play four stadiums? Okay, this Maridon player is really starting to annoy me. But they didn't get a generator. That means their last generator must be prized. That's really good. Okay. Now I think I'm cruising. That's fine. Okay. Still really annoying they had the stupid four stadium, though. But okay, whatever. It is what it is. They did not get that generator off. They ain't attacking me this turn still. I'm still cruising. Alrighty then. Lit. They kept Ultra Ball Switch Card. No, they got boss. Ooh, we got the hero's cape. Do I put that on the active? I can go 270 HP. They could still knock me out this guy. It doesn't really matter, sure. Hit for 120, I guess. Yeah, maybe I should have played that Iono, honestly. I'm like regretting that now. I really shouldn't have. I get in the stadium anyways. Probably should have not Ionoed. It is what it is. We'll hit him for 120. I mean, we're still in a good spot, right? Like, I don't, like, it's still not looking good for my opponent. I don't know if they can even do anything at this point. They have the Vessel. They have to attach twice to the Maridon here to even get a knockout. But they need another Reggie Lecky to also KO me on top of that. Because we got the Hero's Cape on. So. They still need a lot to get there. So it's still looking good. Let's see what they got. Energy attachment. Probably just a pass. Then we can hit this again. For the last boss not prize. We're cruising. They need energy Reggie Lucky to kill me. They currently might not have it. They're retreating into the Maridon. Okay, they're bossing. What are they going after? Uh, the Zatu? Sure. Are they going to KO this? This should be their last boss too, actually, which is also good. I don't think this is correct. I think you should always just hold the hand, right? Because they could knock out my Spathra. But okay, this is fine. I don't. We don't have game, obviously, right? Yeah, there's no shot we have game. Okay, what's our top deck? There's boss. Okay. Still don't have game, obviously, but that's fine. Who needs to win the game? Probably gonna burn that nest ball too, whatever. Okay. Let's just hit the active for 210 and then basically end the game. Because now they need a switch. They need switch Reggie Lecky V Max to knock me out. In a two-card hand. They need switch energy Reggie Lecky V Max in a two-card hand. Three card hand. They need literally the three cards to be switch Reggie Lecky energy. Or a research to get there, obviously. Which they probably could. They have only seven cards left in the deck. But it's GG's regardless because we have boss and Anna. Let's say I own me, which is their only way of stopping me. But I have game. We got game on Maridon. What a wild game. Their list definitely had a lot of surprises. The counter catcher, the four stadiums being really annoying. Um, but it's looking pretty good for us right now. Do they have it? Switch Reggie Lucky energy? Like literally the perfect three card combo. If they were they have to retreat also into most likely the Reggie Lecky V. It would not go into the V Max because I need one energy to win. They have to go into Reggie Lecky V here. And we just have game in hand, obviously. No, they go in the V Max. That's still a throw because I just get energy. I win. 
What? Four bosses orders? What the heck is this? What do you mean you play four boss? What? Okay, sure. I mean, whatever. Why is there four boss and a counter catcher? Okay, this is fine. Not panicking. Attach pass. We could still just retreat the Furigraph. Not even that. They can't even attack Furigraph anyways. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> four bosses order. What is this? What is bro cooking? It doesn't really matter though. Like they're still cooked regardless. Like they can't attack here. And I can like, yeah, this is still fine. If I draw my last energy, I win. Yeah, and that's game anyways. All right. Alrighty then. What a wild game. I'm not going to lie. That was just a bizarre match. My opponent had a lot of crazy things I did not expect. Four boss and a counter catcher and four stadiums. It's a little overkill, I feel like. But we got there in the end. Thanks for Spath Throw. And this is why Spath is good right now. Big basic turbo decks can struggle into the big ostrich chicken thing. Yeah. Really does struggle into it. And that's how it is done. All right. We hit Charizard. Luckily, they did Mulligan. Though, honestly, the Mulligan didn't really do me any favors. His hand's still low-key a little mid. Um, but at least we got ourselves a Flittle, which is good. Yeah, Charizard is potentially, obviously, it's one of our best matchups, but there are a few things that could go wrong. My opponent does have Dusknor and Dusclops, which actually do make a big difference, especially the Dusclops being able to kill Flittle. So this is why I was hoping to maybe get, like, a Poff in there, um, which they were able to find even though I mulligan. Yeah, okay, cool. So we'll see what happens with this, because, like, we need to set up our Spathros and stuff before they get Dusclopses, because Dusclops annoyingly can knock out Flittle, so it's, like, kind of bad. I mean, they get Pidgeot out. It's obviously scary, too. But we'll see. They have six cards in hand. Let's see what else they're cooking here. Do they have Rodom? What am I killing the Duskull? Okay, they don't have Rodom. What's our top deck? Another Psychic. Okay, then. Uh, We're going to have to just research. It is what it is. All right, cool. We got stuff. We can Zatu, Night Stretcher. Not terrible stuff. We can... Clairvoyant sense to the Aspathra. Yeah, I don't mind killing the Duskull here, so that's cool. Retreat. Knockout. I didn't find any Flittles off that research. I don't know where my buddy Poffins are at, but hopefully we can find one. I need to get these Flittles out before, like I said, they get Dusclops up back online. There we go. We got ourselves the juicy, nutritious, delicious buddy Poffin. Actually, I don't know if it's nutritious and delicious. I mean, it probably is delicious. I don't know if it's nutritious, though. It's a little spicy. All right, do they have Candy Pidgeot, Candy Zard? Hopefully not. We'll see. We'll see what they got. Now, if my opponent doesn't evolve Pidgey, do I boss kill it or do I wait? Because I could also chase their Dust Claws, which honestly might be more important. But we'll see what they end up going for. Could just Morty to build up my board a little bit more, which isn't bad. Killing the Pidgey's pretty good, though, honestly. I think I might do that. Okay, we'll see what my opponent has. Okay, they have Candy. They don't have Candy Pidgey. The only Candy Zard, though. Thank heavens. They can hit me here, but we can knock them out. So, yeah. Only two energy going on the Zard. Do they have an energy in their hand? I mean, putting three energy in play is still probably okay, right? Okay, well, all right. Actually, you know what's even better about Charizard now? They only play three. They only play, like, five fire now, which actually gives this tech a better advantage against this matchup, which is kind of funny. So, we definitely want to KO them here. I'm just, like, thinking. Is it ever correct to just not KO? But I think we always KO them, right? Yeah, they have a they they aren't doing much. Oh, and they just concede the game anyways. Okay. So I think yeah, I think I was gonna KO them. I was gonna play Morty, draw a couple cards, KO them, maybe get an energy or two into play, kinda maybe get a, another flittle down and just keep building my board. I'm not gonna Charizard. And like I said, the one thing that makes Charizard a little bit scarier is the Dust Clopses, but it is okay. Not to mention, you know, if Charizard's going down to like five fire now, post worlds. It's not bad for us, Pathro. That's less energy they have in the deck. All right, my opponent starts with a bundle. I don't know what this is. Our start is not very good though. I somehow have no Draw. Now, we do have Farigraph in there. Okay, just making sure. So we are playing against Raging Bull. We want to make sure we have the Giraffe in the deck. I think I'm just going to settle with Flittle Natu. I don't know what this is. Bundle doesn't give me any information. So, yeah. I'm just going to slam down League Headquarters and pass. I don't know what this is. Like I said, this could be anything. So I'm not take risks. But we do have the ability to Ultra Ball for a... Uh, Zatu, I guess. I don't know. We're kind of down bad. We just don't have a great hand. I mean, we can't find any draw supporters, which is kind of killing me right now. So we'll have to just hold the hand and see where it takes us. There's a nest ball getting played. Let's see what this is. Is it moon or something? Let's see. What could we be playing against here? Because they have a bundle. So it's got to be something that's like turbo based, right? So we know it's not Charizard. It's probably, it's either Bolt, Moon, oh, 
or Rage. Oh yeah, Bolt Moon or Maridon. Try to find out. Could be Lost Box, I guess, but it's unlikely. All right, it is Moon. Could be Ancient Box too, which is pretty good. All right. Not the bad man. Not a bad matchup. <clears throat> we just need more cards that can help us out. But we should be okay. There's a Ness or an Ultra Ball getting played. Sorry. Let's see if they grab at this. Okay. Looks like it's Ancient Box. Okay. Ancient Box is one of our best matchups. This is, you know, one of the reasons why this deck is so um, anti-meta. Ancient Box is a pretty popular deck right now in the format. A lot of people are hyping this deck up for Baltimore because it's good against, like, the big basic turbo decks. It's not terrible in a Reggie Drago, um, though I would argue Drago still beats it. It's still close. Moon gets bodied by Charizard, but Ancient Box is getting a lot of a lot of talk right now. A lot of people are hyping it up for Baltimore. It's pretty popular on the ladder. I'm not going to lie. I ran into quite a bit of Ancient Box um, while I've been playing this game over the past week or so. I've done a video on it even. Like, I enjoy the deck myself, so I'm not surprised to see the deck be a little bit more popular in our current meta. And this deck does body it. We do draw the Aspathra. Okay, looks like we're going to have the Ultra Ball for Zana 2 so I can draw some cards. And you can pray to the Poke Gods, it gives us a supporter. <clears throat> Fortunately, the Giraffe Rake's probably just going to die. But we got the League Headquarters in play and stuff. We're cooking. Kind of wish I maybe played Prime Catcher. Would have been nice. No, we got another Zana 2 and Aspathra. I mean, I'll take it, I guess. It's not terrible. Passing? I'm not... Okay, I don't know if it really matters in this matchup. I'm not going to evolve because I don't want to give my opponent information that I don't actually have any cards in my hand, so it's going to make it look like I have a playable-ish card, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to... I'm not going to evolve, just in case. It doesn't really matter, to be honest with you, but... I don't know. I don't want to have myself... I don't want to put myself to zero cards. It just gives more... I don't want to give info to my opponent, so... I'm not going to evolve this attitude. There's no reason to. I don't like this, though. My opponent is getting a lot of time to set up. In a better world, we would have drawn into a supporter by now, or we would have been able to do something other than just passing and doing nothing. Okay, they get rid of some stuff. They're doing a lot of damage now, which is scary. I don't want them to ramp up damage. Like, if I don't do something soon, this game could be over fairly quickly, which is kind of a problem. Like, if they ramp up too much damage, this is going to be really hard to win. This is why I need to draw into a supporter like an Iona or a Research or something. They still can't attack me this turn unless they have a Stadium. So, most of us, I think, play two Pokestop now. It's actually unlikely they find it. Okay, what's our top deck? Dude. <laughs> don't let it in like this, bro. I mean, the good news is, if they knock out Giraffe Rig, we can kill their moon with Cyball fairly easily. It's not that bad, but uh, it's pretty bad when uh, we don't have any playable cards. So this is not good. They're doing a lot of damage now, which is the problem. They're, I've given them too much time to set up. Hopefully, we can draw something soon, man. I don't want it to end like this. They go to Petron. That's interesting. Loki Petron wouldn't be bad in this matchup. I mean, I, well, I guess they don't play Dark Patch. If they can't build it up, it's not good. But technically, it can attack Hispathra. Ultra Ball doesn't get me anywhere. Pass? I could have played it, I guess, to thin out another Zatu. Once again, though, I don't want to give my opponent information that I'm bricking for what it's worth. I don't know if it is worth anything, but, you know, just in case. Yeah, this sucks, man. We could draw an Energy, a Supporter. Any of those two cards would be very good. So, we're just getting super unlucky here that we're bricking. I'm giving my opponent too much time to build up their moons. This is like the exact opposite of what you want to do in this matchup. It's just unfortunate. No, no, we're just getting unlucky here, but still in a fine spot. They haven't found the stadium yet, which is kind of good. So We'll see what Ace spec they're playing. They could be playing Prime Catcher. They could immediately go after his path. Like, I don't want them to do a lot of damage. I need to hurry up and find something soon. Because if they build up too much damage here, if they build up if they they can just build their board up completely and just can just body me. Like, this is really bad. I desperately need something soon. Come on, give me something. There we go. Can finally do stuff. I'm going to build up this guy. I can knock out the bundle. There we go, baby. Finally, we got ourselves a professor's research. Let's get it. Don't need the uh, frigograph, so let's just research. Okay, cool. Just what the doctor ordered. Okay. Do I even bother attacking here, though? Could wait until I find another tool. I don't want them to build up more damage, though. They're doing a lot right now. Five. Five, eight, nine, eleven, twelve in the discard pile. That's 190 damage. They theoretically can kill my Aspathra if I go into it. Hmm. 
I think I'm just going to start playing aggressive, though. I, I got to start doing something. I have to start doing something here. Killing Bundle is actually not terrible either, to be honest, because it technically can be used in this matchup to get around his path. Or even though I have two in play, it's still, like, potentially an annoyance. Let's see what our price is. Psychic. We need to find a... Uh, we need to find an Iono soon. They obviously can attack, but can they do 260 damage? Now, if they knock me out here, this game could just be over, to be honest with you. Like, this match might be over if they do get a knockout this turn. And it's looking like it could be possible. We bricked for a little bit too long, and it gave my opponent too much time to build up a good board and put a lot of Pokemon. Like, this is actually really bad. So, I need to hurry up. Plus three. It's, hot. it's 220 or 230 with the Explorer. 230. Ah, oh, yeah, that's they're gonna knock me out. Let's see, this is just not good. Do they have another energy though? Is the question. They need a fourth energy to attack. They can get a pokey stop though. Okay. This is bad. Oh, they're playing Fez. Yeah, we bricked for a little bit too long, man. Ooh. This is not good. They're doing 260, I'm pretty sure. Like they have a knockout here. And if I don't get an Iono next turn, this is looking pretty bad. Yikes, this is not good. We need to find Heroes Caper, Rigid Man. We need to basically make sure this Pathra doesn't get KO'd here. Let's see what they got. Earthen Vessel. Yeah, they're just doing so much damage. This is the issue with bricking. We took too long to set up our board, and this gave my opponent so much time here to just completely build up an insane... Um, an insane amount of damage. This is the worst case scenario in this, in arguably our best matchup. I don't know what to tell you. We got super unlucky. We couldn't draw into any of our supporter cards in time. This is really, really bad. They're out of Sada, though. If they don't Pelpad here, Iono could go pretty hard. So I definitely, I think if we can find Iono this turn, we actually might be in an okay spot. Iono plus like a way to protect Expathra would be nice. They're going to roll the Pokestop. Oh, they lose another Pokestop. I don't know if they play three or not. If we get this League Headquarters down again, we could prevent them from getting rid of it. That's pretty good. No, they have Palpad. God damn it. That's fine. I mean, it's not the end of the world, I guess. We still have time. We just need to set up three as Pathras. I mean, I could try to kill them with Ferrigraph, maybe. I don't know. We need to find Heroes Cape. Yeah, they're doing 270. This is... Yeah, see? Not good, man. Passing for three turns in a row did not do me any favors here. Okay, we'll see what our top deck's looking like here. Need an Iono. Not a research. Three Ionos in the deck. Oh, we have our League Headquarters, though. I mean, if worse comes to worse, we could always go... Um, worse comes to worse, we could always go... Uh, do I want to put this guy down? I, I guess, sure. I don't know. If worst comes to worst, we could always just try to get, like, a hero escape on and make ourselves a little bit tankier. But they also have access to, like, counter catcher. Okay, there we go. Okay, at least we got the hero escape. We can put energy on the Ferrigraph while I'm at it. Oh, let's go. All right, you know what? If we had Iono here, this hand would be kind of godly. But you know what? I'll take this. This is pretty good, too. I only have 17 cards left. Okay, whatever. There's Iono. Iono for next turn should be pretty good. All right. League Headquarters Hero Escape is kind of based. I'm not going to lie. Can they do 360 damage, though? They're doing 290 now with that knockout. I don't think they can do... It's unlikely, but we'll see. I don't think they can do 360. I'm pretty sure they don't even have enough damage in the deck to do 360. Like, they don't have enough cards in the deck to even do that much. We'll see. That was actually decent. We got the Hero Escape in the League Headquarters. Unfortunately, we did not find one of our three Ionos, which would have put the Cherry on top. Just to shrink their hand a little bit. We are tied in prizes. They actually can't counter catcher. They have the boss, which I probably imagine they're going to do here. But if they don't have an energy card, then they have to Sada. Now, best case scenario, they are out of Pokestop. I don't know how many stadiums they're playing. I've seen a lot of uh, ancient box lists recently play two Pokestop, mainly because it's such a popular stadium right now. You don't really need to play more than two because most of the time you're playing it's a deck with Pokestop in it. But we'll see. If they only have two Pokestop. This is better for us, right? Because then those leak headquarters cannot get removed. Nice stretcher, sure. They could get Pheasantipity, um, which we could knock out with Ferrigraph, technically. Ferrigraph could be our way to knock out Fez. Third energy. They need a fourth energy here to attack. And that's even if they can KO me. If they Sada, they deck out. So they have the Super Rod, too. They actually need to do a lot here to prevent themselves from decking out and losing. Okay, this is still not terrible. 
Again, we should have been in a way better spot, but we bricked a little bit, but it looks like it might be okay. They're playing the Sada. They have to have a Super Rod here, or literally they lose the game. They have to have Rod, or they just lose. Okay, they have Rod. Are they going to get Bundle back? They could Bundle here, which I think they're going to go for. They could Bundle. I'd probably give them the Flittle. Yep. They're putting the Petra in. Okay, that's fine. The Fez is kind of annoying. This makes our Iono essentially useless because I'm just going to give them the Fez Dippy anyways, but still. I need to shrink their hand. I just want to... Does it even matter if I play Iono at this point? I don't even know. Okay, 300 damage. Not a knockout. Well, we know they have the other Sada in their hand. I wonder if it is worth it. I don't know. We have Boss, too. We can also save Boss's order to go after the Fez with the Farigaraf. I don't mind Ionoing. It forces them to play down the Fezidipity, right? Which Or the Petron, which just gives us outs to knocking this guy out. So maybe it's okay to do that. Kind of down. Yeah, I'll Siono, sure. We can probably refine the boss fairly easy. I'm not going to evolve the Flittle. I want to leave a one prizer in play in case they do bundle. I mean, we can go on the other's path, obviously, but just in case. Just don't want to take any chances. That's even if they can attack. They need three energy still. And if we're forcing them to play down their pet or their Fez, then it's better for us. So I think it's okay. And then we just try to find boss, and then just we can KO Fez for game with Wonderful Rumble, if we're lucky. Let's see if they can attack me this turn. They need they need a stadium. I don't think they have a stadium. I feel like we would have seen the other Pokestop by now. I bet you they're only playing two. Because like I said, most Ancient Boxes only play two Pokestop. So my opponent goes Sada. They need Sada attached. That's not even enough. They need four energy. They theoretically, they actually cannot attack me this turn. It, unless, well, if they bundle, I just go into this path through. I don't think they can attack this turn. I don't think they can attack. We'll see, though. Yeah, they just pass. That's, like, pretty good. All right. We can zat to put energy here for sure. All right, cool. We'll zat to again. Because my opponent may just go for the... I'll spread the energy. They may go for the, what do you call it here? Rigid Band is pretty good. Just gonna knock him out. I'm not going to Iono. I'm pretty... I mean, they definitely have stuff in their hand. I'm not going to play the Iono, though, just in case. I could try to re-get boss, I guess, but it's fine. We could win next turn, um, but I think we're in a good enough spot where it's probably game over. So I think we're fine. We can also offset the prize trade with Farigaraf if we really have to. That's my other logic. Like, we're so far ahead, we can offset the prize trade with Farigaraf. They're going to counter catcher my Zatu up here. They're just going to pass. Not good for them. We just retreat. Sure, we're going to this guy. I don't think it matters. We don't have a knockout, I guess, but... I just kill a Frigoraph, right? And it just ends the game. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Let's go for Frigoraph. Basically, just ends the game, right? And then we just go... Spather for a game. Cool beans. All right, yeah, that's GG's. GG's. They can't win. Unless they have some super secret spicy saucy card, but I can't think of anything. Okay, honestly, we still made this comeback... Even though we literally passed for like three turns, and it gave my opponent three turns to explore his guidance, by the time I attacked with an Espathra, they were already knocking me out. So we got fairly lucky we were able to kind of string things together here at the end. Because honestly, this got way closer than it really should have been. This game should not have been this close, but it was. Because we bricked for a little bit too long, and it gave my opponent so much time to build up their board. But even though they had all that time, they still were not able to overcome like Heroes Cape and League Headquarters. You can see why this matchup is that good. Even though literally my opponent was one shot in his path, but before we even did any damage and took a knockout, we still got over the hump here in this matchup, which is insane. You can just see how good this matchup is, even despite all those turns where we did nothing. They have Tusk. It's a little scary, but it shouldn't really be the end of the world. I mean, they can't Tusk anyways, so it doesn't really matter. They, they're cooked. They are cooked. They go on a Fez. I did and the poison damage knocks out anyways because of the frigger app. I was gonna say we don't even need night stretcher, which we have a guaranteed game anyways with night stretcher to get us pathra back. But because the poison damage knocks him out, doesn't even make a difference. Wonderful rumble, what a wonderful attack. That's game. For rigor after taking a KO is pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. And there you go. Again, literally despite the worst thing happening in this matchup for us, we still won the game because Spathra is just that good against Ancient Box.
And there you have it, folks. That is the Aspathra anti-meta deck in action. Once again, it might be the best time to play the anti-meta Aspathra deck. I don't know if it's best to play Aspathra right now with Furgraf, but it does help a lot into your Raging Bull matchup, which is one of Aspathra's worst matchups. But with all these big turbo decks like Maridon, Charizard being popular, and also the two big Roaring Moon decks, Ancient Box and Turbo Moon EX, being very, very popular right now in the format. It's never been a better time to play Aspathra. And honestly, like outside of what, maybe a bad Snorlax and Control matchup, like who really cares about those two decks? Spathra seems pretty good right now. I'm not going to lie. It actually seems like it's a decent archetype within the format. Um, I don't know if it's best with Fergraph. Like I said, it is nice to have because you do need a way to beat Raging Bolt. This deck does not have a way to beat Raging Bolt usually if you don't play a way to beat it with Fergraph. And Fergraph is usually enough to beat Raging Bolt, which is nice. Um, not to mention this deck seems pretty good into like Quad Thorns too. Like, again, just... These big basic decks are just free food for us path. Right at the end of the day, it just comes down to consistency and how often can you set up your board and your deck. Honestly, maybe wouldn't mind playing an 11th energy, another retrieval would be good. I don't know what to cut exactly, but there are definitely things you could change about this path list. But overall, I think this path is actually decent right now within the format. And like I said, it might be the best time to play this path right now in our current meta. But I'll be on to the video on this path deck. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. Help me on we're reaching uh, 65 thousand subscribers we're getting dangerously close to 65k so if you haven't yet click that subscribe button make sure to click it down below right this instant thanks for watching uh check out card any codes use scroll df and check out my second youtube channel down below if you want to get some extra content from me i did a few unique videos this weekend so definitely check out those videos down below on the second channel and i'll catch you all in the video Bye bye